Peggy, as you can see, it's quite a little beehive of activity around here today. Incredible, incredible, <laughs> mind blowing. Well, you know, I, I love roses. I always have, and, and I love American history, and of course, love Thomas Jefferson and that whole period. And uh, it was just important to assemble as many of that first class of American roses as possible. Yeah, it's, well, it is quite remarkable because um, Jefferson was growing so many plants, but roses were part of the plants that he grew at Monticello. And uh, he was obtaining them from some of the earliest uh, nursery suppliers up in Noisette. Of course, the Noisettes were first developed in Charleston in the early years of the 19th century. Yes, uh, John Champneys had a rice plantation outside of Charleston, South Carolina. And uh, he had a number of roses growing on his property, um, including uh, the musk rose, the English musk rose, mm -hmm. very fragrant, beautiful rose, yeah. and uh, the China rose, which was really a new introduction from China. That bloomed constantly uh, over yes, and over. Yes, that bloomed over and over, the old blush china. In fact, we call that the, uh, the China stud rose uh, because <laughs> its marriage with the musk rose uh, resulted in, the, in an offspring that John Champneys realized was, was really quite superior and uh, he started nurturing this rose, he named it Champney's Pink Cluster. And its qualities included uh, ever-blooming, like the china, yeah. fragrance like the musk, uh, lovely pastel pinks. Yeah, nice chalky pinks. Chalky pinks, yeah. and just some clusters of flowers. And they bloom very abundantly in the spring and then throughout the summer, but then they have a rebloom in the fall. Well, what we were trying to do here with this garden is to, is to create a, a truly American garden mm -hmm. and take a nod, a design nod from the Aiken Rhett House in mm. Charleston. Mm -hmm. And these outbuildings, or the outbuildings that the Aiken Rhett House inspired, these these outbuildings, if you will, okay. these, these garden pavilions, they have a slight gothic look to them with some crenellation on the top. What I'm doing here is trying to gather as many noisettes as possible and then uh, mix them with two centuries of American rose mm -hmm. breeding all the way up to the current knockouts and drifts that yeah. are such good bloomers and so disease resistant. Well that'll really result in a quite an important collection I think because you're going to show the whole history in a beautiful setting and um, you know, well thank you. A... There'll be an oval lawn in the center mm -hmm. and then uh, flanking east and west will be uh, quadrants where mm -hmm. the roses will be blended together exactly. two centuries yeah. of different varietals uh, hopefully it'll make a beautiful bouquet oh and it'll be blooming all through the season it's just going to be fantastic thank you mm -hmm.